I just love Christmas music. We should sing a song to open the show. It's gotta be quick. Which one should we do? Jingle bells? No. Oh, Holy Night? Too high. Deck the halls. Yeah! Ready? Deck! It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, a candle with a message about Advent, and our friend Fruitcake with a Christmas stunt spectacular. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. It's Advent season, everyone. And you know, I love events. No, not events, Advent. You know what Advent is, right? One of those metal things in the wall that blows out air? No, that's an air vent. I'm saying Advent. So, two metal thingies. Advent is the season before Christmas. Every Sunday, we light a new candle to get us ready for the day Jesus was born. One candle for hope, one for love, one for peace, and one for joy. And it just so happens that today, one of our guests is an actual Advent what? candle. Which one is it? Don't tell me it's peace, right? No, wait, joy. Are you joy? You have to tell me. Oh, wait. First, we have a clip. I'm guessing that's you, Joy. Or Hope. Your Hope. Look, fire. Speaking of fire, I'm burning to talk to our guest today. Let's not wait any longer. Oh, no. We've run out of time. My apologies, too. I want to say peace. Definitely peace. And fruitcake. So sorry. We didn't get to you again. We'll make it happen. I'll talk to you all next time. Did you guys see that thing this week? What was up with that, right? Incredible. I mean, things, right? We should have written some jokes for this part. <laughs> Probably. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Lily Lightbulb, with a story behind an old tradition. And our friend Fruitcake is here to sing a Christmas opera. Now our hosts, Coco and Welcome, everybody. We're so excited to have Lily Lightbulb on the show today. Marsha, did you know that before light bulbs like Lily existed, people used to put candles on their trees? That sounds wildly dangerous. Agreed. That's why Christmas lights are the best. All the magic of Christmas. Electrified and safe, colorful, blinky lights. Seeing Christmas lights sends me back to my childhood. Their warm glow outside the window, the sound of my dad attempting to unravel them from an impossibly tangled ball in the garage, the security of knowing our tree isn't decorated with open flames. Amen! But what they really remind me of is all the stars that were shining bright in the sky above Jesus the night he was born, and how he's the true light of the world for us, forever. I don't think any light bulbs last forever. Do they? You know what? Why don't we just ask our guests? Everyone, Lily the Light! Well, Jingle Bells, looks like we have run out of time. Much like Lily will one day. Sorry about that, Lily. We'll get to you next time. And Fruitcake, wow, I feel terrible. Once again, we did not make it to you at all. Yeah, our bad on that one, pal. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Talk. Marcia! Give me a beat! My name is Coco and I might run hot, but I keep it cool. Cause he talk a lot. Wait, I talk a lot? Uh... It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Hannah Bell, here on behalf of her choir. And our friend Fruitcake with a must-have Christmas recipe. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome, everyone. Did I not silence my phone? Your phone is ringing. This is embarrassing. Hello, Marsha? Is that you? Hi, Coco. Cool ringtone. Thanks. But that's not all that's ringing today. We have a very special guest. Annabelle is here. Ooh, what kind of bell is she? Jingle bell? Sleigh bell? Cowbell? 
Annabelle is a handbell. She's part of the handbell choir. I want to hear them. Well, we do have a special sneak peek from their brand new Christmas album. Let's play it now. Is that Annabelle? Or that one? Or that one? Huh, maybe not that one. I think that one. Maybe that one. I can't tell. Wow, her choir is so talented. You know, Marsha, this reminds me of the church. Just like Annabelle is one special part of her choir, we all have our own special gifts to use for God as part of something bigger. Yeah, we all make up his church. That's so beautiful, just like the song. Also, I'm pretty sure Anna had the solo in the middle. Like, 99% sure. Well, there's only one way to find out. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Anna Ben. Oh no, we've run out of time again. Too bad you aren't an alarm bell, Anna. Am I right? Maybe so. Anna, so sorry about that. And Fruitcake, I don't know what to say, man. I was really looking forward to hearing that Christmas recipe of yours. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, Marcia! What happened to the studio? Isn't it great? I froze the floor. You did this on purpose. Well, how else were we gonna practice ice skating? Or falling down real hard? I'm okay. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Bob Bobble, on the art of tree decor and our friend Fruitcake with some last minute gift ideas. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hang on to your branches, everyone. We've got a very special ornament today that's a member of the Bobble family. I love bobbleheads. I guess I'm kind of your bobblehead. Even when you stay still, I can swirl around and around. I'm not a bobblehead. A bobble is usually a round glass ornament like Bob here. Bobble, 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 bobble. Bobbles are just one type of ornament. There's also cross stitch ones, popsicle stick ones, even pickles. Pickles? Yeah, believe it or not, parents used to hide a glass pickle ornament in their tree for kids to find on Christmas Day. Was it like a special pickle? Just a pickle. Could it sing and dance? Doubt it. But what I love about ornaments is that they can remind us of God's great gifts throughout our lives. Like family memories, which apparently, depending on your family, may or may not involve pickle. Speaking of family, we have a special surprise for Bob here. <gasps> Bob's whole extended family live on video. There's your Uncle Rob, cousins Bob, Bertie, Bobby, Robbie, Auntie Roberta, Grandpa Robert, and... Denise? A lot of Bobs in there. I wonder if it's a family name. Great question. Let's ask. Oh, Tannenbaum, we almost got there. Why do we always get ourselves into this pickle? Bob, thanks for hanging around with us. And Fruitcake, I just want you to know, I see you and I know you're there. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. I can't get that song out of my head. In Excel, she is gay. Oh. Has it been you this whole time? Yes. Do you want to hear my guitar solo? It's Coco Talk. Today's guest. Three top angel bringing good tidings of great joy. And our friend Fruitcake reading a chapter from his new book, For Goodness Cake. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Today's show is gonna be amazing. We are so, so, so excited to have Tree Top Angel with us today. Wow, living on top of a Christmas tree. I wonder if she's ever been scared of heights. Scared? Like the shepherds were when the real angels declared the birth of Jesus? Shepherds were scared? Remember in Luke 2 when the angel said, do not be afraid. Oh, right. And then they said, <clears throat> behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. 
And then a whole bunch more angels showed up. Oh yeah, I'd love to see that. Well, why don't we? Let's go to a clip. All right, they didn't have cameras back then. That's okay, I can reenact it. Cue the lights. Hey, look at me, I'm a shepherd. Do, 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 do. Just doing shepherd stuff. No surprises in store for me today. Boom, angels, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And shepherds were like, what? They were probably totally like that. And then the shepherds were like, let's go run and tell everyone we see about Jesus. We can get there faster if we take the helicopter. I don't think the shepherds had a helicopter. You sure? Pretty sure. But why don't we ask our friend? Everyone, please welcome Treetop Angel. Oh no, we ran out of time. Sorry about that, Treetop Angel and Fruitcake. Man, I really thought this was our day. Well, I'll talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Talk. Marcia, there's flowers in the studio. Isn't it great? Ah, <sighs> spring flowers make everything feel fresh and new. They also make for a fun game of Marsha Coco. Marsha. Coco. Marsha. Coco. Marsha. Coco. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, a family of frogs with a message about Easter and our friend Fruitcake with tips for finding hidden eggs. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha. It's Palm Sunday, everyone. Time for a parade. A parade? Ooh, I love parades. Confetti, float, candy. Well, there's no candy on Palm Sunday. But when Jesus entered Jerusalem, everyone waved big palm branches. Were the palm branches made of candy? I don't think so. But palm branches are a sign of royalty. And Jesus was, and still is, the King of Kings. And guess what? Today, we have actual palm branches in the studio. The Frond family is here. The friend family? The Frond family. I think you're saying friend funny. Our friends are a family of fronds. A palm frond is the same thing as a palm branch. Oh, so where's this friendly Frond family from? Florida. Here's a clip. Wish I could wave like that. Maybe they can teach us. Let's ask. Oh man, we're out of time already? <sighs> Appreciate you being here, Franz. And Fruitcake, we're pretty fond of you too. I see what you did there. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Talk. I can't go on. You know what they say, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the cocoa. Now that's much better. <laughs> it's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Ivan the Ice Water with a message about living well. And our friend Fruitcake with tips for beating the heat. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome! Ivan the Ice Water is our super cool guest today. Right, Marsha? Marsha? Ah. Hey there, fellow uh, floaty. Not super talkative, is he? There's nothing as refreshing as ice water on a hot day. I love ice water, but it's nothing compared to sparkling water and definitely doesn't measure up to living water. You mean water that talks? No, living water is what Jesus offered to the woman at the well. Did she drink it? Not exactly. You don't actually drink the kind of water Jesus offered her. He knew what the woman really needed was eternal life that comes when we have faith in him. Eternal? That's like forever. Exactly. Refreshing water forever sounds amazing. Before we dive in with Ivan, we have footage of some really big ice water in his homeland. Now that's a floaty. Let's find out more about how Ivan handles the heat. Aw, 
Oh man, we're out of time already? Thanks for chilling with us, Ivan. We should get you out of here before you melt. And fruitcake, we're sorry again. But you always keep it fresh. Talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Um, Marsha, what are you doing? I'm practicing impressions. You mean you can sound like other people? Cool. Who can you do? Well, you, Coco. Really? I'd love to hear it. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Coco, a blue mug with a delightful, hilarious, quick-witted marshmallow co-host. That's pretty good. Who else can you do? I can do the announcer. Listen. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Sammy the Slingshot, to discuss the importance of accuracy. And our friend Fruitcake with a family recipe for shepherd's pie. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hello, everyone. We are super excited for today's show. Sammy the Slingshot is here. Do you know who she reminds me of? David Slingshot. Like the David Slingshot? Yep, David the Shepherd who became David the King. His Slingshot. Oh, that's so old school. Not to mention Old Testament. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the next guest on the show was the rock who flew out of the Slingshot and hit Goliath? We tried to book him. He's on tour with his rock band. So he's a rock star? Get it? David was another kind of rock star. He was outsized by Goliath and faced him with nothing but a slingshot, a stone, and faith that God would win. And he did. Wow. So it didn't matter that Goliath was bigger because God was on David's side. Nothing really matters because you have God on your side. Here's a reenactment. I wonder if slingshots ever get dizzy spinning round and round and round and round and round. Great question. Why don't we ask? <laughs> Out of time so soon? Well, Sammy, we have to swing back to you. And fruitcake, Marsha and I were really wanting to have that shepherd's pie for dinner. Wait, what are we having for dinner now? No idea. But we'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Oh. Wow! Oh no. Marsha, what exactly is all over the floor? Beads! They are all the rage. And when I heard we had beads on the show, I wanted them to feel at home. We have bees on the show. That's what I said. Bees! Not beads, bees. You know, honey. Got it, honey. Sweetie pie! It's Coco Talk! Today's guests are a couple of bees with a message about the Beatitudes and our friend Fruitcake on flower decorating. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. Today we're talking about Beatitudes. Yep, bees who have attitude, right? <laughs> Totally. Wow, you can speak B? I guess I do. Will you ask them about the Beatitudes? Is that a B band? Never heard of them. What's the buzz? No, in the Bible, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about how we can be. The Beatitudes are like opposites. <laughs> like smiley and frowny, daytimey and nighttimey, hot cocoa and cold cocoa. More like when sad things happen, you can be happy because God will comfort you. Oh. It's about choosing to be joyful, well, which is what God wants for us. Even when something is hard? That sounds backwards. I know, opposites. Before I forget, we have footage of the bee's beautiful handiwork. Sweet! I'll say. How long did it take you to make? <laughs> Interesting. What did they say? <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, left on a cliffhanger. Well, thanks for being here, friends. And Fruitcake, we really wanted to hear about your new flower decorating hobby. Talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. It's winter, my favorite time of the year. I thought summer was your favorite. Sunshine and swimming pools. That is pretty great too. Or spring with beautiful flowers blooming and celebrating Easter. I do love Easter. Or fall with all the colorful leaves and nice cool weather. Wow, there are so many great seasons. How do you even pick a favorite? You know you don't have to choose, right? Oh, phew. It's Coco Talk! Today's guests, a snowball on behalf of the snow community. And our friend Fruitcake with a snow angel demonstration. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Well, welcome. We froze in the studio today for our guest, Sunny the Snowball. Pretty cold for a sun, aren't you? Can I call you Sun, Sunny? Sunny? Sunny is a snowball. Did you know that snowballs are made out of thousands of individual snowflakes? When they're all packed together, they form a strong bond. Wow, that's amazing. It's like the Bible says, <clears throat> a group of snowflakes is not easily broken. I think it says a rope of three strands is not easily broken. A rope of three strands? You mean like a braid? Yeah, like a braid. The point is, a community is also stronger together. What's a community? It's a group that shares something in common, like a neighborhood, school, or church. Like me, you, and Fruitcake. I'm glad you guys are my community. Back at you, Marsha. Before we hear from Sonny, let's take a look at his home community. That's a good-looking community. It really warms your heart. Maybe winter is the best time of the year, along with spring, summer, and fall. Before we freeze, let's ask our snowy friend. What do you think the best season is? Oh, no. Ran out of time again. Thanks for being here, Sunny. Sorry we didn't get to hear from you. And Fruitcake, I really did want to see your snow angel demonstration. Yeah, that would have been cool. Or, you know, cold. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Meow. Meow. Hmm, maybe more like, meow. What are you doing? Getting ready to talk to our guests, the kittens. Not kittens, mittens. Mittens? Fluffy and Muffy are a pair of mittens. Huh. Do they also speak cat? I don't think so. Oh. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, a pair of mittens with a message about accountability. And our friend Fruitcake with fashion tips for your winter wardrobe. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome! We're talking to Fluffy and Muffy Mittens today about being a good team. A dynamic duo. A perfect pair. Partners in crime. Well, not crime, but they are accountability partners. What's an accountability partner? It's someone who holds you responsible for your actions. Like how it's not good to fill up on cookies before dinner, and the other day you reminded me to only have one cookie? Exactly. We look out for each other. In the Bible, Paul says to encourage one another and build each other up. So are we accountability partners? Yeah, I guess we are. Then I should tell you, I'm responsible for eating the last cookie yesterday. I knew it! But we're getting off topic. We usually have a clip, but I really wanted to make sure we get to our guest today. What's it like for you two to look out for each other? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding you. Hmm, maybe we should move on to fruitcake. Okay, fruitcake, what would you like to add? Oh man, we were so close to finally getting an interview. Thanks for being here, Mittens. And fruitcake, we almost got to you. And I really wanted to hear your winter fashion tips. 
Yeah, Coco could have used them. I sure could. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, dear Coco. Happy New Year to you. That was great. Now it's your turn. My turn to what? To sing Happy New Year to me. Um, I don't think that's a thing most people do. Please. Okay. Uh, it's Coco Talk. Today's guest, a New Year's ball with the story of Paul. And our friend Fruitcake bringing a word about fresh starts. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. We have Ned the New Year's ball here who drops from a skyscraper to ring in the new year. Wow, what a way to celebrate new beginnings. Speaking of new beginnings, Ned is here to tell us about Paul. He was a guy in the Bible who made a lot of bad choices, but then he met Jesus and was never the same. Wait, wasn't that guy's name Saul? Actually, his name was Saul, but after he met Jesus, his name was changed to Paul. In the Bible, new beginnings often came with a new name. So if a new year is like a new beginning, do I need to change my name every January? I've always wanted something totally different, like Martha, or maybe Monica. Nah, how about Maria? No need to change your name, but the Bible says when we meet Jesus, we get to start over too. Sweet! Like a do-over. Yeah. Did you know after Paul's new beginning, he ended up writing most of the New Testament? I knew he sounded familiar. Before we hear from Ned, I thought we could do a New Year's Eve style countdown. Count me in. 10, 9, 8, I'm seven, so excited. 6, me too. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! Fun. Let's do it again. No, we need to get to our guest. All right. So, Ned, what do new beginnings mean to you? I should have known the countdown would cue the music. Thanks for being here, Ned. And Fruitcake, we really would have loved to hear your take on Fresh Starts, too. Happy New Year, everyone. We'll see you all next time on Coco Talk. Marsha, what are you doing? Spring cleaning. Where'd you even get this stuff? In there. I've never seen you wear any of it. Well, for some reason, floating around in hot cocoa all day, I never get cold. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Stone, the Super Slam Rockwell, with a message about miracles. And our friend Fruitcake with exercise tips. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Happy Easter, everyone! Before we get to our hard-hitting interview, Stone the Super Slam Rockwell has challenged me to see if I can roll him over. Ooh, what do you get if you move him? I get to pick the music for the end of the show. But if I can't roll him over, then he chooses one of your songs? Do you really have your own music? Oh yeah, rock and roll. Amazing. Okay, let's do this. Are you ready to roll, Fruitcake? Okay, in three, two, one. Well, that does look like a challenge. It is. I can use a miracle right about now. Oh, oh, you know what you remind me of, Mr. Stone from the Super Slam? Can I call you just Stone? You remind me of the big stone they put in front of Jesus' tomb when they buried him after he died on the cross. It was really hard to move, too. But when Jesus' friends went to see him, the stone was rolled away. <coughs> How did they move it? Asking for a friend. They didn't move it. And if you think that's amazing, get this. Jesus wasn't there. <coughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. The Bible says Jesus' friends found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they looked inside, they didn't find him there. Yep, Jesus had risen. That was the biggest miracle. He was alive again and is still alive today. That is amazing. 
You think you're amazed? After Jesus' friends left, they saw him walking along the road. They were so surprised. Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. Are you okay? Maybe we should roll to a clip. Um, oh, right. Rolling! Whoa, you're really rolling. That's rock and roll if I ever saw it. Looks like we'll be hearing that Marcia song after all, Mr. Stone. Tell us, what's the secret for getting you to roll? Oh man, we're out of time. Thanks for being here, Stone the Super Slam. And Fruitcake, appreciate you reffing. We really wanted to hear about your exercise routine. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my song? Granite, marble, quartz, and limestone. Gravel, pebbles, tough and soapstone. Obsidian, pumice, art, igneous, rock. So many stones under where we walk. Did you love that video? Hit subscribe or ask your parents to download the Middle Kids app.